Okay, this is the uh, Thursday, September 3rd, 2020 meeting of the Franklin Township Zoning Board of Adjustment. Franklin Township is operating under a declaration of state and local emergency due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. And it has been determined that the public attendance at public meetings of the Franklin Township Zoning Board of Adjustment would pose a risk to the health, safety, and welfare of the public. As a result, this meeting has been relocated from the council chambers of the Franklin Township Municipal Building to a virtual meeting format and is being conducted using, using virtual flash remote telecommunications equipment in conformance with directives of the state of New Jersey. The relocation of this virtual meeting of the zoning board was posted in the township's official newspaper, the Courier News, on the township's website, the township's cable station, and on exterior doorways of the municipal building. The notice detailed the following means of public participation in this remote meeting. Link to the virtual meeting via WebEx and a call-in number for those without internet access. Public inspection of application materials was made available via the township website and or by appointment in the municipal, bu municipal building. Formal action may be taken at this virtual meeting. Reminder to board members to mute yourselves unless uh, you're asking questions or voting. Um, so please mute yourself. Uh, we're going to um, have the, each of the applicants present all of their testimony first, uh, and then we'll go to questions of board members and the public just to kind of streamline the process. Instructions for public input. For those that are participating via WebEx, you can indicate your desire to comment, ask questions, or make comments by indicating it uh, in the chat section or by there's a raised hand function. Uh, and at the appropriate time in the meeting, we'll call, call on you to speak. For those members of the public that are listening uh, uh, via the call-in number, you can press star three, and that'll also uh, alert, your alert us of your desire to provide comment. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Okay, would you call the roll? Anthony Caldwell? Here. Laura Grauman? You need to unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, Bruce McCracken? Alan Rich? Here. Gary Rosenthal? Here. Robert Shepard? Here. Joel Reese? Here. Cheryl Bethia. Here. Richard Prokanik. Here. Kunal Lakia. And Robert Thomas. Here. Okay, first item, minutes regular meeting, June 4th, 2020. Is there a motion to okay. approve? And a second. I'll second. Is uh, Anthony Caldwell? Yes. Laura Grauman? Yes. Alan Rich? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? Yes. Robert Shepard? Yes. Joel Reese? Yes. Cheryl Bethia? Yes. Richard Prokanik? Yes. And Chairman Thomas? Yes. And then the second item there, regular meeting minutes, June 18th. 2020, is there a motion? Yeah, I will do so. And a second. I'll second. Uh, Anthony Paul. Caldwell? Yes. Alan Rich? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? Yes. Joel Reese? Yes. Cheryl Bethia? Yes. Richard Prokanik? Yes. And Chairman Thomas? Yes, and it looks like we can move right to the hearings section of the agenda tonight. Somerset Group Hospitality, LLC ZBA 20 11 parking variance requested by applicant due to interior <laughs> renovations, eliminating the pool and the conference rooms, adding a banquet center at 60 Cotton Tail Lane, Somerset, Block 530.04, Lot 1.01 in the CB zone. This has been carried from August 6th to this evening's uh, hearing, and there was no further notification. And are we ready to proceed? Yes, before I bring um, the applicant in, I do see that Mr. McCracken uh, just appeared in the attendee. Um, so I'm gonna bring him in as a panelist.
On your private screen. Is he there? Ahem. Okay, so uh, we just we just got started. We haven't started the first hearing yet, so you got here just in time. And I'm going to put you on mute again. Circle all. Okay, so I'm going to bring in now the uh, applicant, uh, the applicant's attorney, um, traffic engineer, and architect. Sounds good. Okay, so um, I think it would probably be appropriate for uh, Mr. Schwartz. Uh, I've unmuted you. Um, do you want to introduce yourself and get started with your application? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, my name is Brian Schwartz. I'm an attorney. I'm representing Somerset Group Hospitality, LLC. Um, as was already stated, um, this is a Clarion Hotel, which is, um, already existing and the application is that we uh, my client intends to convert the existing pool and some rooms meeting rooms into a banquet center uh, that will also entail other interior renovations which our architect George Toma will talk about in a few minutes um, the application requires a parking variance, and the proofs that we're going to give you tonight are, first of all, from the applicant to explain why he thinks that the existing parking is going to be adequate. Quite frankly, this is a hotel which is not doing well even before the pandemic. Uh, he's going to talk about what his typical capacity is and why he believes that there's going to be enough parking. Um, as I said, Mr. Tome is going to explain what the interior changes are going to be. There are not going to be any exterior renovations. This will, this building will look the same from the outside after the renovation as it does now. All the changes are going to be inside. Mr. Tom will explain to you the changes. Mm -hmm. He'll also explain his parking analysis from an architectural standpoint of why he believes that the parking is adequate. Finally, uh, we'll have Gary Dean testify. I know this board is familiar with Mr. Dean. He is a traffic, en traffic engineer as well as a planner. He will explain the, he will go through the ITE uh, requirements for parking. He will give his opinion as to the adequacy of the parking. And he will also give the necessary positive and negative criteria for uh, the variance under the municipal land use law. This application is only for a parking variance, uh, which isn't to say that we're taking it lightly. Obviously, we have three witnesses here, but that is the only relief that we seek or that we need. If there are no questions, then we'll proceed with our application. Okay, move forward. Actually, one quick question, Mr. Uh, Schwartz. Who's going to be um, the presenter, meaning uh, who's going to be putting the exhibits up uh, in WebEx? Um, I'm going to. Um, I did it last night, and I'm not perfect, but I'm not bad. I'll do the best I can, but I think it'd be best that I, I will go ahead with the uh, uh, with the exhibits, I have two screens up, and my other screen is my is the are the exhibits that you already have, and I assume that you're going to give me the opportunity to share screens. Um, there is about a 70-30 chance you're going to see the exhibits as opposed to pictures of my grandchildren, so I apologize about that. Um, but if you, I think if I share the screen, you're going to be able to see the uh, the various exhibits. Yes, I, I just made you presenter, so you have the ability to share your screen. Do you see? Are you seeing the application on this on your screen? Yeah. I'm seeing it. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. So then it's working. Um, now I just have to figure out. Um, our first witness will be Mr. Azir, who is a principal of of Somerset Group Hospitality. Uh, is Mr. Mr. Haley is Mr. Azir on the. Uh, is connected. 
Yes, all of the applicants representatives are 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 have now been made panelists and they can um uh, I'll unmute Mr. Azir, but in the future, each of them, each of the representatives can unmute themselves when it's time for them to speak. Mr. Azir, are you there? Mr. Azir? I'm here. Okay. Okay, Mr. Azir, I'm going to swear you in. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Bruce. Uh, Mr. Azir, um, I, I can't see him. I assume the board cannot see him either. Mr. Azir, do you have a video icon that you can hit? I, I see your exhibit only. Mr. Azir, it looks like you're calling in from your phone. Is that correct? I'm not calling. Maybe. Are they? No, that's Mr. Toma. No, no, I see AA. It's the third person over. It either look. I can't tell if it's a cell phone or an iPad or something. Mr. Azir? My, this is my cell phone, yes. Yeah, it's your cell phone. I don't know if you can see from I don't think it's. I mean, it's it's it, it's nice if we can see his face, but I don't think it's critical as far as the, as far as presenting testimony. There he goes. There, there he goes. goes. See me. Okay, Mr. Okay. Azir, if I could try again. Do you swear for the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? Truth. Is that a yes or a no? Yes. Okay, um, Mr. Schwartz, uh, go ahead and you can qualify the witness. Right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Zier, you are a principal with Somerset Group Hospitality LLC, are you not? Yes. And your company owns the Clarion Hotel at 60 Cottontail Lane in Somerset, New Jersey? Yes. How long has your company owned the hotel? Since 2008, around 12 years. Okay, and was it a Clarion when you bought it? It used to be a Ramada. Okay, and do you have any other involvement with, or have you had any other involvement with owners? Ownership of hotels in the past? Yes, I own another hotel. All right. Are, are you involved with the operation of this hotel? Yes. Right. Prior to the pandemic, let's say in March of this year, 2020, what was the typical occupancy rate of your hotel? Around uh, 49, 50. How often, if at any time, did your occupancy exceed 70%? Very rare. And in terms of the type of people you attracted to your hotel, were they typically business people or families or, or single people? What kind of people typically were uh, using your hotel? Most of it's transient and some of the, like uh, uh, sport teams coming in area and uh, some uh, travel tourist was was it how how would you consider the allocation between weekend and weekdays uh weekdays is uh, you know i i think we're running we're running very low in a weekend in a weekdays and in a weekday weekend we we'll get a little bit percentage up to reach up to the 50 percent May I assume that since the pandemic occurred that your occupancy rate has been even much lower? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, tell us what you are proposing to do um, inside your hotel. We are asking to do uh, converting the swimming pool area to a banquet facility, uh, jointing to existing uh, meeting room in order to attract uh, bigger groups and attract some uh, events like a wedding, engagement party, bar mitzvah, and all this will encourage people to come to the area too. Uh, your um, property is located on a um, a corner. Is that correct? Right. Uh, what is, what is the? It's the corner of Cottontail Lane and what street? Uh, Western Canal Road. And how far is it from Route 287? We are right at the exit. 
Okay, and so you're a very short, maybe a quarter of a mile or so from the um, exit um, onto and from 287? Yes. Uh, typically, how do people, let's not say currently, because I realize that we're in unusual times, but let's say within the last two to three years, how do people typically get to your hotel if they're going to stay there? We, you know, we have people coming on, like a sport team comes with a bus, tourist team, uh, you know, just uh, coming also on a bus. And if we have a construction crew, they coming with cobbled cars, you know, like four or five people in a, in a van or something. You also have meeting rooms. Typically, what are the, what have the meeting rooms been used for, for, let's say, the last two or three years? It's been used for different events, like uh, some uh, uh, small parties, like birthday parties, some church meetings, uh, some small business meeting, like 10, 12 people meetings. That's all. Uh, the people who come, you, you said that people will come to stay at your hotel by bus, by groups. You said there's some uh, travelers, there's some people who might be visitors from the outside area. Are, are they, when families come, how many cars do they typically bring? Yeah. Very rare when you see a family coming. We're not in a resort area, you know, unless you're visiting some family in the area here. The, the, when you have meetings, are typically people staying overnight or are they just coming and then leaving before uh, yeah, what the meeting's over? If the meeting is staying a couple of days, you're staying in the hotel, definitely. Okay. And how are those people typically coming to your hotel? Coming with the vans or buses. Now, I, I kind of got off the subject, which is I asked you what you propose to do. So tell us, tell us exactly what you're planning on doing and then tell us why you're doing it. We're planning to do a bigger bank with facility so we can get, uh, like, as I said, a wedding. Uh, we get uh, per mitzvah. We get a bigger birthday party, engagement party. Uh, which is uh, people asking for it now, some fundraising for churches. You know, all this, uh, they need a big number, you know, and my small room doesn't even have a piece of business of that. So we thought about it. And uh, we, as I see from my experience since 2000, uh, I've been in a hotel business and uh, I feel like it. if I do this, I'm going to encourage people to come to the area, encourage people to stay in this hotel, and will be a better business piece for me and for the area. Now, when I look at the architectural plans, and Mr. Tom is going to go over them specifically, so I'm not going to do that with you. Um, I see that there's a currently a pool, and you're going to replace the pool with what you call the proposed Grand Hall. Is that correct? Yes. And you're also eliminating two conference rooms called the Bruns Brunswick and the Raritan? Raritan, yes. Okay. Why, why do you want to change from a pool to a banquet hall? Uh, the pool doesn't bring anything now. No, not, I don't have no family coming to the pool, enjoying the pool, you know. And uh, the area is strictly business people, and they don't even need the pool. And as I see from my business view, the, the pool, uh, I can eliminate it to get better piece of business for the facility. So this, you consider this, um, this business, this new business platform, so to speak, will be beneficial to your hotel? Right. And it's gonna bring in a different kind of customer as well, is that correct? Definitely. Now you've been in the hotel business and you're in the hotel business currently at two hotels. Do you think there's a um, a market for a banquet facility like this? Yes, it is. It is. Otherwise, I wouldn't even think about it. I, I realize that's a pretty self-evident question. You wouldn't be doing it if you didn't think there was a market for it. There is a market for it. Now, you still have a number of conference rooms. There's four of them shown 
that are adjacent to the to the um, pool and to the proposed um, hall. How will they be used when the um, when the, the banquet facility is is installed? There's not going to be any use for it. Say okay. if, I have, if I have a wedding, that will be the same people using this for a small room for like a, a cocktail hours, and then they go to the reception. And also maybe a room for the bride or the groomsmen to get ready. Be used for the same people. Right. So there will not be any meetings in the rooms that are designated 34 P at the same time as there is a banquet going on in the uh, grand hall. Is that correct? Yes. I realize it says 34 P because of 34 people, but that's an easy way to identify them. Okay. okay. Now there's 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 also a couple other rooms that are um, more to the front of the hotel. Um, are they going to remain as meeting rooms? Yeah, this is a mean meeting rooms is used during the days only. During the day, they will not, they'll, will they be used at the same time as there's a banquet? No. All right. I know. So t tell me how people come into the hotel. And how people will get to the uh, the banquet facility? Is they coming through the main entrance, and they coming with the the new way going to the meeting room there? I mean, to the corridors to the banquet facility. I noticed that there is a change in where the check-in location is. Yeah. We're going to move the check-in location from the front to the side. And why are you doing so, that? Just to give more opening space for the people. It doesn't interfere with the guest hotel when they come in. Okay. And are you opening up also the area, the pathway? Yeah, it's going to be open as a chosen uh, Mr. Toma uh, drawing. You're also going to have bathrooms for the Grand Hall? Yes. So those people won't have to go to the bathrooms that are towards the front of the no. lobby. No. So, so the the entrance into the hotel will remain the same, correct? Yes. Are you making any exterior changes whatsoever? No. All right. So the building's going to look the same on the outside. You're not going to put in new doors. There's no new exits or anything like that. Nothing. Based on your experience in the hotel business, how do you expect people to be arriving at your hotel who are going to uh, to the uh, banquet or the wedding or bar mitzvah or whatever it is? They coming like a, if they're having a wedding, they come like a family together, four or five people, and some of them they coming now the the bride and groom they coming was a bus now. It's it's uh, it's a I don't know the people come with the, with sometimes they come with buses based on how far they pick the venue area. Do people also I mean it, uh, now with the drinking laws being strict, do people also go, come by Uber, Lyft, taxi, etc.? Yeah, if I live close by, definitely I come with Uber. Why should I drive? One of the Chief. questions, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. One of the questions that was um, raised by the board uh, committee was whether the kitchen is large enough to accommodate the meals that will be required for the banquet room guests. Yeah, we can handle up to 500 people. We used to, we used to have two rooms, each room, the one of them may carry 180, I guess, and the other one around 150 or 200. So we're not going to have, we're able to handle the food. It's not a problem. All right. There's no plan to bring in catered food or anything like that? No. Now, there's also a Hooters restaurant on the premises. Is that correct? Yes. Where where do their patrons normally park? They park to the other side from the north side, they call it, north side of the building, at right by the entrance. All right. So they're actually... They're actually closer to Cottontail Lane. That that's where they park. Yes, yes, yes. 
I'm looking at the um, an old site plan, and so they park along where I'm I'm putting the cursor. Is that correct? Right. Is it is it a very busy r restaurant? No. They, they, it's not a play. They don't have dancing or live music, do they? No, no. All right. So it's not typically going to conflict with a banquet. A di let's say a wedding that's going from let's say eight to twelve p.m. Is that correct? Yes. Do you believe that the amount of parking you have on site will be sufficient for the large number of people be coming to your banquet facility? Uh, I, based on my experience on a site, will be enough. Would it be accurate to say for the professional people? Would it be accurate to say that the other uh, property? occupants in the area in, uh, uh, next to you and across the street are not really places that would be conducive for having parking, overflow parking? Did you hear my question? No, I again. Let me try again. Um, what What is next door to you on Cottontail Lane? I think I have a building next to me, office building, and by five o'clock is vacant. Would it be easier for you to be able to park cars there or would that not be permitted? There is no need. There is no okay. need. All right. Um, when the pandemic ends, are you going to be remain? Are you going to be able to remain competitive without this banquet facility? I doubt. So is this a way that you basically can remain in business and hopefully uh, make it uh, make viable? Yes. All right. I have no other questions. Okay, since we're holding questions, uh, you can go on to your next witness. All right, I, I'd like um, to have uh, George Totma testify. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mr. Totma. Could you please raise your right hand? Okay. You swear or refer the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? I do. Please uh, state your name for the record. George Toma, uh, I'm the architect from Toma Architects. I did the drawing that's about to explain now. I've been in business for uh, over 35 years. Mr. Toma, are you a, a principal of Toma AIA? Yes. And are you a, a, an architect who's licensed in the state of New Jersey? Yes. Can you pl briefly explain your experience and training in the profession of architecture? Okay, I'm registered architect in New Jersey, New York. I have my registration. And, uh, I used to work for an office before. I have my registration since 1994. Uh, I do okay, a lot we'll, of we'll them as an work expert. on restaurant, uh, renovation of hotels, uh, school actually, and many residential work in the area. I heard somebody say that he'd be accepted as an expert. Yeah, I mean, we'll that. accept his credentials as an expert. All right, thank, thank, you. thank you very much. All right, Mr. Toma, did you prepare the plans that are entitled uh, Interior Renovation, the very latest revision date of May 5, 2020, consisting of three pages? It has, to be, I did. It has to be sworn in, doesn't he? I'm sorry? It has, has to be sworn in, doesn't he? was sworn in, Mr. Rosenthal. I think he was. Oh, oh, wait, what? I, I think he was. Yes, he was. Mr. Okay. Schwartz, he, he was. He was sworn in and accepted as an expert witness in, your, in the field of architecture. Thank you. So, Mr. Tommy, you prepared these um, documents, which I have up on my screen. Um, why don't you explain each, each page and tell me if you want me to change the page? I'm, I'm showing the existing floor plan and your proposed plan. Tell me uh, what the proposal is and what these plans show. Okay, let's start with the existing floor plan, which is the one above that. The first drawing. Yes. Uh, this one shows the existing condition. Basically, we have the uh, restaurant site, 
We have the small ballrooms, one, two, three, and four, uh, to the left of the restaurant. We have two ballrooms and a swimming pool. Uh, right now, there is only uh, one set of bathrooms that's next to the restaurant at the bottom of the drawing. Uh, the proposed is to take the area where we have uh, the pool with the associated room. It's an exercise room inside. There is like a uh, lockers and uh, bathroom inside the pool and the two rooms and convert the entire area to be uh, one uh, one room, basically. One board room that can accommodate up to 350 people. And if you go to the next, uh, if you see here, the entrance will remain the same. If uh, in front of that, there is a lobby. There is a chicken area. This area will change. If we can go to the next drawing, please. Yeah, basically, uh, relocating the chicken area instead of the front of the door now, you will be uh, the front counter to be on the left. We'll open this, widen it, make it all glass, and make it with an angle. That will require some uh, minor structure modification. We're removing a, a piece of wall and putting a column in the center and putting two large uh, bathrooms to accommodate the number of people that we're gonna add to the area. Uh, quite frankly, it was under, uh, the number of toilets was, was not enough for the current, but that I guess that was the old code. So we're taking the whole area to be a grand hall for 350 people uh, the currently with a couple of egress doors, they're going to remain the same, one on the top left corner, one in the bottom, which uh, used to be a door to the egress from the pool. And we're going to have like a divider in between to make the room smaller if they have a smaller event, because most likely most of the event will come in the 200, 250. Every now and then you're going to have the 3, 350. So if you don't need the whole space, we'll basically have a, a folding wall in between. The, the folding wall would be within the uh, like you're calling the proposed grand grand hall. Correct. Okay. When and, it's and open, so, the maximum capacity will be 350 people. Yeah. What what makes you think that? And, and I think we all know this, but what makes you say that most uh, most of the events are going to be fewer than 250 people? Uh, because most of the wedding now, unless it's a very grand wedding, for example, and invite uh, over 300 people. But mostly you'll end up with the two two fifty, and that's why normally in any uh, catering hall or any uh, wedding event you will see this type of uh, partitions. So you don't have to light the entire space. You don't have to serve the entire space. Basically, you will separate an area on the front, and you prepare the area enough for the number of people sitting there. Okay. And you can continue to explain the other changes are being made. Okay, so as I said, the other changes is the bathroom added and the main entrance to the area where the grand uh, room is and the small ballroom one, two, and three, and four. That will be uh, the change, interior change. On the outside, there is no change. If you go to the next uh, drawing, please. All right, from an architectural standpoint is, um, is the front lobby and the, and the corridor going to the grand hall? Is this designed in a manner so that there won't be too much crowding in the front lobby and there'll be a free flow of, of, uh, of people going to the back? Yes, that's why uh, I had to relocate the uh, chicken area, the uh, counter for chicken. I have to uh, open the wall. There is, right now, if you look at the existing, it's only like five foot uh, wide. Uh, opening that take you to the small rooms. So we made it much wider in order to accommodate the high number of people. Yes. Is this, this, there's an area, I don't know if you can see my cursor. Yes. Um, are these uh, 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 doors that are going to have, um, th this, this is, is this, what's this made of? Is this all glass? This is all glass and doors, full door, like three sets of doors at the bottom, basically. So by being all glass, you're maintaining like an open um, appearance, but at the same time, you're dividing the grand hall area, the banquet area from the rest of the hotel. Is that correct? Yes, because in, in any event, you would like to have the people, uh, the noise, the music, uh, the people coming to the party separate from the uh, people coming for the hotel. Okay. And, and, and are you, do you consider this to be an upgrade in the appearance of the lobby and 
the area as you come into the hotel, the, the renovations you're making? Uh, definitely. The whole area will be uh, redone. You're going to have a new counter. You're going to have a, a floor, a ceiling, a nice chandelier. Uh, you're going to have to make it fancy in order to attract business. So in, a lot of interior work will be done. All right. So, so the, for the interior, this is an upgrade of the hotel. Is that correct? Correct. Now, you... you you provide us with um, elevations. Um, they're in a separate screen. I won't open them right now because I want to stay with this one. Um, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. Um, but you, you provide elevations, but are they remaining the same? Yes. Elevation will remain the same. Egress door in the same locations. Uh, the elevation, one of them shows the uh, glass. There is a glass roof on top of the pool. Uh, the glass roof will be upgraded, will be a new one, of course, and so but it's the same same shape, same uh, area, but will be a brand new one. Right. And there's no additional doors, there's nothing else from the outside, there's no, there's no what we'd call site improvements, is that correct? Uh, no, this the, the area in the back will only be for egress, for emergency egress, because most of the, or almost everybody will come from the front. The cars will drop them at the main door for the hotel, then go park. Or the bus, whoever comes in, and everybody will come from the front. All right now, I, I realize you're an architect, not a traffic engineer. But as an architect, do you work on certain when you're doing architectural work. Are you also working on traffic flow and that sort of thing? Uh, I work on the number of parking, the uh, how many parking is needed based on the use for every project I do, because that's required and uh, have to submit it. If the parking is less, we have to go for a variance like here. If the parking is uh, sufficient, I design without going for a variance. So I I do check that. Uh, from my experience, yes, I know how traffic works. I'm not the expert on that, but definitely I know, yes. Before, I, I'm going to want you to get into your traffic calculations, your, your, your parking calculations. But before I do that, do you have any, um, do you see any per problem with traffic flow? You said that buses would be, uh, would 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 have their their uh, their passengers coming into, coming out in the front. Same thing with vans or anything else or limousines. Do you see any problem with that? Is that going to create any problems for the hotel? Uh, no, because basically it's uh, it's like a circle. So everybody comes in. If the car drives you, go in the back and park, or go around and get the exit. It's like a in a way, it's like a certain one-way traffic. If you're coming from the main entrance from the uh, cotton tail uh, lane, you make a left, you go to the in front of the hotel, you drop the people, and you keep going straight, go around the building to the exit or to the parking. Okay. It's actually a nice anything, flow of traffic. Is there anything else you want to tell us about the interior improvements? Uh, no other. We're going to have uh, some landscaping also outside. Around the entrance, we have to make it attractive, so we have a lot of uh, shrubs, flowers, uh, but no uh, construction or no change on the uh, building itself. Right, so you will be uh, um, adding more landscaping? Correct. All right, I'm, I'm now I'm now showing a uh, a document that has your letterhead Toma Architects at the top, and it says parking analysis, occupancy chart, parking requirements. Tell me what you did, why you did it, and what the results were in your analysis. Okay, this is basically to uh, calculate the number of parking based on the existing occupancy or existing rooms, and the number of parking proposed based on the new uh, proposed plan and the net change. And the number of parking uh, goes with the number of people. Uh, as you all know that uh, for hotel rooms, there is a 1.1 per room for uh, catering or for conference is every one, every three person. So if you look at the top table, it's basically calculating the number of people existing occupancy is based on the current rooms so the first one is 34 34 and go on total capacity total occupancy is 570 people based on the proposed uh, total is 779 and this calculation is based on a hundred percent 
occupancy in all spaces, like 100% occupancy in the small room, the same time with the big hall, the same time hotel 100%, restaurant 100%. So this number basically assume 100% uh, of everything, which that's based on code. I have to do it this way. However, based on real life, of course, it's completely different. So based on that, we have a net change of about 210 uh, people added, and that will require additional seven parking, 70 parking space from the below uh, table. All right, now you've heard testimony from our client who says that the the remaining meeting rooms will not be used at the same time as a major event is occurring in the banquet room. D does that allow you to take away the numbers that you have for um, any of the rooms? Okay, because yes. the, the Brunswick room and Raritan room are disappearing. Okay, that's going to be part of the banquet room. So that, that, that we're, we're regaining that. But in terms Correct. of the other ones, we will, they will no longer be used as meeting rooms at the same time as the banquet room, correct? Uh, that's correct. If we do it, uh, basically, I have to take the two rooms of Brunswick and the Rivera. This is uh, about 36. They are going out, 36 parking space. Then we have, so that will take out 36 parking space. If we take these two rooms out, if we take the four rooms uh, as we, heard the testimony before the full four small board rooms will be used as a cocktail area for the same uh, event so basically the parking cannot we're not going to add the parking twice it will be calculated as a large hall but the same people will be using it so that takes away also about 45 parking spots and if we as figure all of that we basically are reducing this by about 70 Actually, 81 parking spot. So, so occurring, assuming 100 occupancy in the hotel and 100 percent occupancy in the restaurant, we we'll reduce it by 81. Based upon your analysis, and especially in view of um, our clients' um, statements about the typical occupancy rates of his hotel, do you believe that the number of spaces will be? sufficient once the banquet facility is being used? If we calculate the capacity for the restaurant as 70% and the hotel as 50%, uh, that will reduce the number of, and not calculating any of the other if, uh, four rooms at the same time. The total parking space in my calculation will be about 224 required. But that's assuming, as I said, all other rooms are not going to be in the same time, assuming 70% on the restaurant and 50% in the hotel. Uh, do you agree with Mr. Azir that the kitchen is adequate to prepare the meals necessary for the kind of banquet that could be held at this facility? Uh, yes, because basically uh, when you do a banquet, it's like a choice of three orders. So it can be a brief done early enough and you can have everything uh, Ready made, they can work all day if they want, but I think the kitchen is capacity can serve the number. Yes. All right. Thank you. Those are the questions I have for you. Thank you very much, Mr. Toma. You're welcome. Okay. Again, if, since we're holding questions, you could uh, bring your third witness. All right. So the our our final witness is Gary Dean. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Hello. Mr. Dean, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? Yes, I do. Please state your name for the record. Certainly, Gary Dean, D-E-A-N. Professional address is 181 West High Street in Somerville, New Jersey. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Dean. Hello, Mr. Schwartz. Uh, are you a principal in the firm of Dolan and Dean? Yes, I am. Uh, are you licensed in the state of New Jersey in any profession? I am a licensed professional engineer and licensed professional planner, and both of those licenses are in good standing. And we'll accept that so you can go on with your, your uh, presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Dean, you'll be testifying both as a traffic engineer and a planner tonight? Oh. 
correct. And have you testified in um, in Franklin Township before? I have testified uh, probably over a hundred times in Franklin Township uh, before either the zoning board or the planning board over the past 32 years. Um, and, and at some point in my career, I've had the pleasure to represent the community uh, serving as a traffic consultant uh, back in the Jim Pettit engineering administration. Uh, so would that um, indicate that you're familiar with Franklin Township, you're, f you're familiar with Somerset, and are you familiar with the master plan and the um, land use development um, ordinance in the uh, township of Franklin? Yes, I am. All right. Um, tell me what you've done in, in preparation for this hearing. Uh, certainly, board members. Um, I, I've prepared by reviewing the environs uh, of the area in question. This is a somewhat unique application in as much as there are no proposed site plan changes. It's simply interior renovations. However, because of the change in interior use, principally through the elimination of the uh, pool and related areas, including two meeting rooms, um, there is a concern that's been raised, obviously, as uh, related to the sufficiency of parking. Um, I've driven by this site, obviously, numerous times over the past 25 or 30 years, but for this application, I visited the property in question, um, although, Conditions are not what I would characterize as typical uh, currently, um, but I am familiar with the environs and the circulation and access as well as the neighboring properties. Uh, Mr. Schwartz, I have an exhibit just for the board's benefit that puts the site in context relative to the surrounding land uses, uh, particularly the access and highway. Um, Is that it? I believe it was submitted previously. Thank you. Um, I don't know if there's a way to make that into a full screen, but just to orient the board, um, you, you will see the subject property. Um, if I'm allowed to share my content, I think I can do this a little bit better, Mr. Healy. Yeah, please, please let Mr. Dean be the um, host or whatever you call it, um, you know, the presenter. If you can. Give me a second to do that. Sure, I'm sorry. It's just this exhibit. I have it in a little better scale that might be more readily visible. Mr. Dean, I am not trained in this at all. You know, you are, you're much better at this stuff than I am. I'm glad well, to have you do it. I assure you I'm not. I just get lucky. All right, I, but you should be, you, you should be able to share your screen. Thank you. I'm going to take these down. Okay. Uh, board members, I've, I've uh, displayed a pre-marked exhibit, I believe, entitled Site Aerial Exhibit. Um, I prepared this myself, dated August 6, 2020. Uh, in the foreground of the photograph, uh, it shows the, the subject property in Weston Canal Road at the bottom portion of the exhibit. Uh, north is to the bottom of the page. I know it's unusual, but it just makes the general orientation of the site better. The, the canal, obviously, is the abutting land use immediately north. Um, which is undeveloped. Route I-287 is to the east of the property, which serves as the zone boundary between the CB zone and the R-10 zone further east. Um, immediately contiguous or south of the subject property uh, is a multi-story general office building. I believe it's still occupied by uh, Ilva de Serona, uh, among other tenants. And you will see the pattern of land uses that continue along Cottontail, uh, are principally multi-story office uh, buildings. And then immediately to our west begins the M1 zone, um, and you'll see a large warehouse manufacturing type facility. Um, you will note, and I don't know if my cursor is showing, you will note immediately adjacent to the site is the southbound off-ramp from Route 287 which allows traffic to proceed several years ago. Traffic signals were installed uh, to better facilitate traffic, and that leads directly across the site frontage and then to Cottontail, where the access to the property lies. Um, in terms of overall uh, circulation, there is full uh, two-way circulation provided around the site, uh, accessing the parking spaces, as you've heard from Mr. Uh, Azir and Toma, the Hooters restaurant, and I'm, hopefully my cursor is showing, is in the northwestern corner of the building. 
um, and the parking area for that generally wraps around the westerly and northerly side. The porta cachere and entrance to the hotel is, I'll say, on the easterly end, but on the northerly facade. And then the balance of the parking that fronts the Route 287 ramp uh, is serving uh, what limited hotel guests there have been, uh, as well as along the south side of the site. Um, in terms of our analysis, we've reviewed a couple of different mm, statistics, if you will, uh, principally those compiled by the Institute of Transportation Engineers. And unless anyone needs that exhibit, I'm going to take that off for the moment. Um, we recognize that your ordinance requires a fairly high parking standard for hotels. It's 1.1 spaces per room. So the assumption under the ordinance is that basically it's one space for every employee and one space for every single hotel guest uh, in a room. From a practical perspective, that has never proven to be the case. Um, as you've heard from the applicant, he's running at uh, fairly low occupancy, but even when full, the parking requirement is not a one-to-one -one ratio. And the general reason for that is um, during evening hours when the hotel guests fill up, there's very few employees, uh, front desk, maintenance, housekeeping, and, and the like. Uh, the bulk of the staff and administrative in particular is there during the day when there are very few um, there's also, I can't conceive of a case where there is a one-to-one -one ratio of guest parking per room. Um, even in a business type hotel, uh, multiple employees who share rooms will also, not share rooms, but have individual rooms, will share a vehicle. Families who are traveling obviously share vehicles, but oftentimes require multiple rooms, and that would also continue to be my expectation as we get into banquet uh, type events. Um, in reviewing some statistics, and, and again, we like to rely on, on data from other sites where, where the studies have been conducted. Um, and we have reviewed statistics compiled by the Institute of Transportation Engineers for two different types of hotels. The first one is a hotel hotel, and you may say, well, what's a hotel? A hotel is considered to be a full service facility that usually has a lounge, a bar, a freestanding restaurant, meetings rooms, conference rooms, and things of that nature. By contrast, a business hotel is basically just that, a limited amenity operation that caters to principally business travelers, but has limited meeting rooms, uh, doesn't have conference or catering uh, type space, um, certainly that doesn't usually have a restaurant. So as we look at this particular property, one might categorize it as a hotel in that it provides all of those amenities, even under the current configuration, but certainly in the proposed. As we look at the ITE statistics for 126 rooms, and it's further assumed that that's at 100% occupancy, the site would require 149 spaces, and that includes event space. Now, that seems like a low number to me. So we also looked at uh, a business hotel to which we would add additional parking for meeting restaurant type space, and a business hotel at full occupancy each one of the 126 rooms occupied only requires 92 spaces. And I contrast that with your ordinance that requires roughly 140 or 138. So the, already there's a certain surplus, if you will, that's built into your ordinance requirement for uh, hotel parking. So what we've also done is we've looked at um, that demand remaining consistent at 92 for just the hotel. And then to that, we've added the required ratio at one per three, uh, one space per three seats for the seating within the ballroom and the remaining Hooters restaurant. And as I add up all of these numbers and I and we've we've calculated the Hooters to require 62 parking spaces at 186 seats, 
and the ballroom requiring 117, again, at a ratio of one per three. And we come up with a total of that use of 179 spaces to which we would add the 92. And that 92 assumes every hotel room is occupied and every hotel room requires uh, a parking space. And after we add all of that up, we get 266 spaces for the site. Now there's only 217. So we, we have a shortfall, if you will, of 49 parking spaces. And I apologize, I know it's a lot of math and numbers, but it, it speaks exactly to, to the nature of this use and why both the applicant and I concur that the parking's sufficient. With that, we'll say shortage of 49 parking spaces out of 126 rooms, that basically means 39% of the rooms um, would be leased or occupied by guests of the actual event. So I think that's a fairly low number, and I think that can be supported in as much as the, this entire business model is predicated on more of a full service facility, uh, one where guests can basically come in, check in, and then attend the event, and then at the conclusion of the event, they need not drive or get back on the highway system. Um, they would remain within the facility itself. And I find that to be a fairly reasonable and low assumption to ensure that the overall parking uh, supply on the site will not be overwhelmed. As we start to look at other factors, for example, the Hooters traffic and parking demands tend to wind down as the evening goes on. At the same time, the hotel occupancy would be rising. So I, I find those two components to essentially offset one another. Um, and in my opinion, I believe that a sufficient parking supply can be provided for the site. Um, we've also looked at it in terms of what it does to the, to the neighborhood. Um, there is no on-street parking permitted on Cottontail or on, or on Weston Canal Road. Um, and the site can easily accommodate the demand, as you've heard from the applicant, without requiring um, any other parking off-premises. Um, in my opinion, given that there's a sufficiency of parking, um, I believe that we meet the necessary proofs for what's considered a flexible C2 variance, which is 4055D70C, um, in that the purposes of the municipal land use law would be advanced by the deviation, albeit fairly minimal, from your zoning ordinance. I think the benefits outweigh the detriment. The detriments would be either paving more parking, um, which is, in my opinion, environmentally irresponsible, particularly given the proximity to the canal, um, but also that it's not needed. I, I think it encourages an appropriate use of the property. Um, obviously, banquet and meeting facilities are, are ancillary and customarily found with hotels. And I think it does promote the general welfare by encouraging people to, to remain on site. Um, I believe it meets subsection G, which is to provide sufficient space and appropriate locations for a variety of commercial uses, and certainly to encourage private development, uh, which is subsection M, to lessen the cost of development and have a more efficient use of land. I also think uh, there's one final criteria in that it supports one of the goals that's expressed in the 2016 redevelopment plan uh, wherein the objective was to encourage commercial development in areas with access to major regional highways, specifically Route 287, and in established areas. And the purpose of that is it's to locate uses that draw traffic in areas where they will least impact residential neighborhoods. And I think this certainly, uh, this application certainly supports that objective um, of your master plan. In summary, I think that the variance can be granted without substantial detriment to the public good and certainly without impairing the intent and purpose of the zone plan and zoning ordinance. Um, obviously, the use is permitted and the biggest issue is whether um, the principles of the property and certainly myself looking at it objectively uh, 
feel that there is a sufficient amount of parking to accommodate uh, the, the entire operation, even under a worst case scenario, uh, completely with the subject property. And, and that's all I have at the moment. Uh, Mr. Dean, I just have a uh, two or three uh, follow-up questions. The uh, these assumptions that are made in the ITE um, figures do do they what what percent occupancy in the hotel does the ITE contemplate? The ITE looks at their statistics under two criteria. One is the total number of rooms. The second is occupied rooms. And in the statistics that I quoted, I looked at occupied rooms assuming 100% occupancy. So at 100% occupancy, a 126 room business hotel would need 92 parking spaces. And, and that's supported by actually going out and studying these particular sites and then compiling the statistics that, and that's the purpose of ITE. So, so that is truly a worst case scenario for this site. Is that correct? It's a best case scenario for the client, but a worst case scenario in terms of parking. Is that correct? Which is how I tend to operate. I, I want to give the board a level of comfort that we've looked at it, you know, at its worst case with literally every seat being filled and every room being filled. Um, and, and I think that this, this fits within the site very nicely. The, the other question I wanted to ask you is, um, I, I, I personally, for reasons I can't understand, I don't get invited to a lot of weddings, but the ones I do, I see a lot of people um, coming by Uber or some sort of transportation um, instead of a car um, because of, you know, concerned, I guess, because they're going to be drinking. Does IT, does IT get updated enough to keep, keep the, that kind of... Uh, phenomena um, factored into their their criteria? I, I would say it does. However, the parking statistics that were, were compiled by ITE, the window for that database closed in, I think it was either 2017 or 18, and, and the findings were published in 2019. The reason that's important is because for those board members who, who may be familiar or avail themselves, those services have really not come into vogue until very recently. And so the ITE data doesn't really take that into consideration just yet. Um, I will say in my experience, I've represented um, a, a substantial operator of a catering and banquet facility in the state, um, principally in Northern New Jersey, but the facility is known as Seasons. It's in Bergen County. Um, there's also a major, the same owner owns the Venetian, in uh, in Garfield, and he owns Shadowbrook in Shrewsbury, and and having represented that applicant and evaluating parking and traffic trends, I will concur that it, uh, there is a significant amount of ride sharing, and it's either in private limousines or Uber, um, or the bride and groom will often hire a bus for their guests to get between the catering facility, uh, the reception, and the hotel simply for that very reason with focus on driving while impaired, you know, why subject guests to that risk? So they have taken that responsibility upon themselves. And as a result, we just don't have a lot of individual car parking. Uh, you have reviewed the existing site plan and traffic flow through the site. Is that correct? Yes, I have. Are you satisfied or do you have an opinion as to whether the increased traffic flow of people coming to the banquet facility can be handled and accommodated safely um, within the existing traffic flow on the site? I do. Um, events are typically, larger events especially, um, late afternoon to evening hours on the weekends. Um, that is the exact opposite of peak traffic times in this area relative to commuter and uh, commercial manufacturing type traffic flows. Um, and this is one of those land uses at, by its very nature, it, it caters to traffic during off peak hours. So get, given the infrastructure that's literally at the front door of the site, including exit 12 of 287, um, I, I think it, it is very well located to accommodate traffic smoothly and efficiently. Thank you, Mr. Dean, that's all the questions I have. 
Okay, that's uh, the final witness, correct? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. Okay, board members, if you have any questions, now would be the time, and this would be all inclusive, all witnesses. Doesn't sound okay. I have a couple. Um, the meeting rooms. Now, um, how how can you guarantee that they will be used during the during the banquet? Mr. Azir, anybody? Can you allow Mr. Azir to respond, please? Unmute. Okay, Mr. Azir. Now you hear me? Yes. Okay. Can you repeat that question again? The meeting rooms. You said the meeting were, rooms were not going to be at the same time as the banquet, right? Yes. How can you guarantee that? It's If it's meeting room, that means during the day. And banquets usually done at night. Okay, so when when you have a wedding reception there, where does the bride and groom and everybody else change at? Do they have a changing room that they go to? To some of them, we can give them a suite to change the room. Um, but the meeting room itself is not going to be utilized during banquets banquets hours from 6 to 11 or 10 o'clock so you would have room usually in the morning mr rich can i can i follow up on that please sure uh, mr azir um the same person will be scheduling the banquet room with the meeting rooms correct yes so if you've got a 250 300 person wedding are you going to be also, is that person going to be scheduling large meetings at the same time? No. Okay, so that's the answer, isn't it? That you, you're, you're, you're going to police it, you're going to control it yourself. You're not going to allow that to happen. Yes. Okay, my next question is, just, just so I'm clear, the restaurant is going to prepare the food for the banquet room, correct? No. Where we do you prepare? Home kitchen. Where where is where does that show? It's it's inside of inside the kitchen. Is that is that what's on on the bottom side of the picture of the proposed grand hall? It's right next to it on the bottom. Uh, may I uh, answer this question, this is George Toma? Uh, if we can put the plans, you, you see, see the, the restaurant, restaurant on top of the restaurant. There is a big kitchen that's shared. Some of the kitchen feet of the restaurant, then you have the door on the left that takes all the food and serves all the conference rooms. It's a large kitchen that serves food. So the restaurant is a limited menu. This food are mostly the fried chicken, the wings. It's a very limited menu. And it takes a small piece of the kitchen. The remaining of the kitchen serves the rest of the hotel. Okay, so it's a shared kitchen then, right? Correct. Okay. Um, because you're updating, is there any reason we couldn't install a uh, level two charging station in the parking lot? Uh, that's a good question about the electric charger. We're planning. <laughs> we're planning. We asked for it. Okay. So, okay. So that's in the works then. Great. Thank you. That's all I have. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Sounds like we could move to public, Mark. Yeah, well, actually, the only member of the public is the next applicant. Um, so unless he uh, uses the raised hand function uh, or indicates in the chat that he wishes to speak, I'm, I'm going to assume that he's here for his own application. Okay, is there anything? Uh... If I could just ask one question of Mr. Dean. Um, Mr. Dean, it looks like from the aerial photo, 
Uh, there is an existing refuse area in the back behind the Hooters. Is that correct? I'm going to look on an aerial and I, I just called it up. Hopefully board members can see it. I, I am not 100% familiar with where that refuse container is. Um, and I defer to Mr. Azir to clarify. Uh, this is the area uh, at the bottom of uh, right after the hooters. There's a fenced area for the uh, trash. It's the existing one and separated from the uh, parking area. Okay, so that's that's really my question. Do we know? Maybe Mr. Dean, you know, you wouldn't know this, but somebody can answer it. What the size of those dumpsters are, and if um, approved, if th they are sufficient to handle the waste that would be generated from the banquet facility? Yes, will be enough. Okay, do you know how big those existing dumpsters are? We do replace it every couple of days. So okay. we have to have a schedule every couple of days. Okay. Four times um, a week. If if the board is satisfied with that, then uh, that's that's the only question I have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? And then, since there doesn't appear to be a public, uh, I would guess that Mr. Uh, Schwartz could summarize and and move forward. I, I will do so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, board members, uh, thank you for your time this evening. Uh, I don't think anybody would argue against the change from the pool to the banquet center. It, it's obvious that this hotel and probably coming out of the pandemic, any hotel in this area is going to need a shot in the arm in order to survive. Um, I, I, so it, it can't be argued. And it's a permitted use, so I really don't have to argue it. But it is a big benefit to the township and, and this particular uh, business in particular. The issue is parking. That's what we're here for, for the variance. Uh, Mr. Dean has testified as to the objective criteria, the ITE criteria, which is which is what the um, your, your planner requested us to do when we hired Mr. Dean, because we wanted to be sure that, in fact, from the objective standpoint, that the property could accommodate sufficient parking. We, we, all, we all go to functions these days. We all know that it's a possible change from 20, 30 years ago when everybody came in their own car and they uh, therefore had maybe close to what your ordinance requires in terms of one-to-one. -one. We also know that this hotel and probably virtually all hotels do not operate at 100% occupancy. They don't occupant, maybe even operate at 70% occupancy. It's quite a bit less. So the worst case scenario, or for the business, the best case scenario of 100% or 70% occupancy that, that Mr. Dean testified to really doesn't happen. Uh, the applicant has stated that he is going to be sure that internally they regulate the use of the remaining conference rooms so there's not a conflict. This is the type of thing that is self-regulated. Property owner is not going to want to have parking problems on his property. He wants people to be left with the feeling that they went to a good, a good party at a good site. He is going to want to be sure there's not a parking problem. We've met the objective criteria both in terms of the traffic testimony as well as the um, the planning testimony to merit this variance. I think this is a great thing for the property owner. It's a great thing for the area and a great thing for the township. And I do ask that you approve this application. Thank you very much. Okay, if there's no, we'll entertain board discussion or motions. I would like to. Okay, go ahead. And um, I would just like to say that I think this is a great idea. Getting rid of the swimming pool, giving this hotel a sort of a change. I've been to this hotel and I can tell you it does need a shot in the arm. And I think that it deserves to have an upgrade like this, which will draw some additional business. Thank you. 
Okay, thanks. Anybody else? I think personally, it's a it's a good application to see something something different and a little bit better opportunity to stimulate that hotel. So, if you know, again, if there's no discussion, we'll entertain a motion. Okay, I would like to. Uh, Is somebody else talking? Okay, I would like to make a motion that uh, we approve this application uh, with the condition that the uh, meeting room is not be used during the time of a, of a ballroom function. Also, that uh, we install a level two charging station available for the guests and attendees. Okay. Any? Anthony Caldwell? Yes. Are you muted? Laura Grauman? Yes. Chris McCracken? Yes. Alan Rich? Yes. Gary Rosenthal? Yes. Robert Shepard? Yes. And Chairman Thomas? Yes. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Much appreciated. Um, enjoy your Labor Day um, holiday. And I assume, uh, Mr. Attorney, that a resolution will be um, uh, brought up for the next uh, next month. Uh, yes, we'll try to get it to you by next month. Great, excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, okay. our second Thank you. for your time, board. Would be Farris Georges, ZBA 20 13 C variance, which the application is looking to construct a 28 by 25 foot patio at 109 Churchill Avenue, Somerset, block 101, lot 62.01 in the R10 zone. Do we have everybody online for that? Uh, yes, we do, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, I'm going to keep them. I'm going to suggest to be mute, muted for a few seconds. Um, since this is a residential uh, application, I, I typically give a brief summary. Um, you do have a technical review committee report that provided the um, summary of the application, its location, um, a copy of the relevant sections of the application, uh, including the survey with the proposed patio drawn on it and the applicant's um, larger scaled sketch of the proposed patio. It's in the R10 zone, which has a impervious coverage limit of 30%. Right now with the existing home driveway and a smaller patio, they're currently at 26%. Uh, and with the proposed patio, they'd be at 33%. Uh, TRC uh, reviewed the application and really didn't have any comments. Um, so I think at this point I'll, I'll uh, we'll unmute uh, the applicant and he can be uh, sworn in and, and provide uh, some testimony. There, there's no attorney on this application. Is that correct? No, it's a residential application, so he does not need to be represented. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ferris Burgess, and I live on the 109 Churchill Avenue, Somerset, in New Jersey. Mr. Jarris, um, before you begin, if I could just have you sworn, can you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? Yes. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. So, can I go ahead? Okay, maybe you can explain your project to us. Thank you, sir. So, just I'm planning to build 25 foot by 28 foot uh, patio. Uh, in the rear of the house, and uh, it's attached to the house. Uh, actually, I feel is, uh, I think is the, the proposed patio, patio is uh, reasonable and sized, and that the uh, variance is uh, not significant, that would result in substantial detriment to the public good. 
I also believe that uh, is the reason for that is for me and just enjoy an outdoor living space for me and for my family. And uh, also, I believe that uh, the builder pulled out to the maximum, which prevents virtually any patio without barrier. I will be more than happy to listen to the board member. Okay, any questions from board members? So, as indicated um, a few minutes ago, uh, again, the, the limit in the zone is 30%. Uh, as the applicant just stated, uh, when the developer built the homes, um, actually in his home right now, I don't believe he has a very small um, kind of steps in the back of his uh, property. So, he doesn't even have a patio in his backyard. So, just with the home and the driveway and the walkway, he's already at 26%. Um, so what he's indicating is that, you know, basically the builder kind of built to the max uh, and, you know, in, in what he's presenting to the board is that uh, with this, um, what he feels is a reasonably sized patio, that's putting him at 33% where again, the zone permits 30. So he's 3% over. He uh, does understand then I he, that any other structures he might want to put on the property would be a lot more difficult to, to uh, do with because they all will have variances. I, I think the applicant, you know, surely if he didn't understand that before, I mean, obviously, if he wants to put a shed in the future or anything else, that'd be additional variances. Um, we have had other variances in this neighborhood. Um, the property to the um, uh, I guess it would be to the northeast corner uh, was actually an application before you about two years ago for a patio uh, for the same reason um, that the the builder basically with this based on the size of the homes, you know, kind of built pretty much right to the max. Um, so, you know, you've had at least one, if not, I think one or two other applications before you over the years in this particular, this particular neighborhood for that reason. No man go. Okay, if, if there aren't any more board questions right at the moment, let's take the one person you said in the public. Actually, Mr. Chairman, the one member of the public was this applicant. I don't have any other members of the public um, online or, um, or calling in. Okay, does the board need any more or want any more information? No. Okay, I'm open for an emotion. I, I to 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 agree back to this good variance was EA 20 0013 as as requested. I second it. Anthony Caldwell. Yes. Laura Grauman. Yes. Bruce McCracken. Yes. Alan Rich. Yes. Gary Rosenthal. Yes. Robert Shepard. Yes. And Chairman Thomas. Yes. Okay. Is there anybody uh, would like to, if there's nothing further, anyone want to move to for adjournment? I move to adjourn. I'll second. second. And I'm sure uh, I'll hear all in favor. Against. Okay. Me meeting adjourned. We'll thank see you. you all in two weeks. Have a good.